Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nance Porter. Today I have a stainless steel basket strainer. And I'm going to be installing it on that sink right there. Now, I want to show you all the components inside so you can see what it looks like. And then you can see the process it takes to install it. So I'm gonna open this up. Uh, very important to know the orientation of all the parts and how they go in. The problem most people have is they don't know where the sink goes. The sink goes right before that. So right in there. So this open space is where the sink is. So let me show you what we have. Heavy strainer, which is that's probably the last part you're gonna put on. We're gonna have this little nut right here, like a little plastic, little plastic washer. Not too sure the name of that, but it does have a name. You got a brass nut. Take that brass nut off of there. Get that little cup. Take that off. Get this little, uh, like a friction disc. That's what it's called. And then you got a rubber, like a rubber disc. So this friction disc is to keep the rubber from binding up when you tighten it up. So that's very really important. This little piece of cardboard is like a little friction disc. Um, this part here is where you will put your silicone or your plumbers putty. So let's get some plumbers putty. Yeah, yeah. Got some plumbers putty. We're good a good kind of be generous, you know, grab a grab a good amount out of there and roll it up pretty good. If you got too much, you can always um, you can always take it out and put it back into the, the container. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna roll a good amount of uh, plumbers putty here. Pretty good amount. It's best to have too much and not enough. You know, see how thick that is. It doesn't have to be that thick, but it's about as thick as your finger. That's that's a, that's about a good thickness. You're going to wrap this around the whole entire thing, just like that. Now, whatever is extra, you want, and you will have extra. You can always take it and put it right back in the, um, right back in that little bucket there. That's all you got to do. I'm going to grab the most important things I need, which are these things right here. This is what I need. Those are the most important things I need. So the first thing, make sure you have tools. You're gonna, need, you're gonna need some tools. You might need one tool to hold the middle of this from spinning. Something like this, just to stick in the two little holes to keep that from spinning. And a pair of pliers or channel locks like this to turn this nut right here. You use an open end wrench, whatever's easier. Some people use monkey ply, monkey wrench, what do you call it, monkey wrench. As long as you can turn it and don't break it. First thing we're gonna do is stick this, this underneath. And while you stick it underneath, just hold it under there, center it. Kind of press firmly on it. You should make sure it's centered. If it's not scented, you might have a problem. Put your rubber gasket, followed by your friction disc, a little cup, your nut. And just tighten these all together like one unit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
take this one. This is gonna hold it. This is one's gonna hold it underneath. So that, or you can do from the top too. Whatever is easy. If you want to do from the top like this, that's fine too. Like you, not this. Some people do it from underneath. You put pressure on it. I'll do it from the top today to show you can do it either way. All you're doing is keeping that from spinning. There's no right way and wrong way to do this. As long as this, this now the plumbing party is gonna keep the water from passing between the strainer and the sink. You can kind of do this really snug. Make sure your sink's in the middle. Your strain is in the middle, I should say. did here it's, and you can see the other side you can see all the uh, plumbers putty that kind of oozed through there kind of give you an idea how much you have you know kind of came through so you just take off this axis it's kind of take it off like that I should put that more in the center I can, I can always adjust that though Always adjust it so it comes down in the center a little bit. I'll do it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now it, it will still work that way, but I just want to adjust it just a little bit so it's same kind of. I'm gonna kind of center it out. Yes, a little bit more putty on it, so we'll take that off too. It's about right in the middle now. So now you got a pretty good seal. So when the sink fills up with water, it goes down the drain and not on the side of the uh, strainer. Now the I was only the video was only intended to do that, but I guess I could show you how to put the faucet on as well. But because I'm doing a whole countertop, I'm probably going to put the countertop on the actual base with the sink before I do the, um, I'm probably going to put that sink into that little slot right there before I do the, anything else. Now, a lot of people do this different. Some people put the countertop in that space first. Then put the sink in there and put the plumbing on afterwards. That means you got to lay on your back and that means you got to do a lot of laying on your back, rolling around on the ground, which is to me is unnecessary. So what I like to do, I like to get myself prepared. And we have these little clips right here. Let's see if I can show you what they look like. These little... Uh, like a stationary disc thing somewhere. These, these clips right here, those hold your sink together. But when you buy them, let me see, I guess I'm, I'm trying to do this without, without a cameraman, so bear with me. 
So usually they come separate like this. You have this piece, you have another piece like this. But then what you find yourself doing is putting these together. So they go like this. The smaller head goes through just like that. And then you kind of just screw it in. What I'm doing is set these up. And you kind of want to have it out like that. So it's, it's ready to turn in when you're ready to turn it in. So I'm going to set these up now. These little uh, clips here. I'm just going to make sure they're all ready. Because it's a lot easier to have them set up now. You're trying to set them up while the sink, you're trying to hold the sink. Now, if you got two people, it's, it's a little easier because one guy can hold the sink while you're putting these in. But you got to do it by yourself. That's what you're doing. You're just taking it. Just remember how it goes because think about it. This piece here, I'm going to show you guys in a second, locks into the back of the sink. In the, and then, um, this piece here, this little knot, this little knot right here, locks into that track of the sink, and this part pulls on the bottom of the countertop, so that way you get a tight, tight grip there. Uh, we got two more to go. Now they come, they come about um, twelve of these in a in a pack. Depends on what kind of sink you have. Some have different types of clips. I like these clips better because they're more user friendly. Put that last one in there. And let me show you the back of the sink so you know what I'm talking about real quick. So the back of the sink, if you look on the side, it has this track, this track right here. Now it has a slot in the middle, so you can drop this in the middle. So you can drop it in like that and it locks in place. See, once you drop in that slot, it locks in place. Now, if the countertop is here, this teeth, these teeth will kind of pull on the countertop. And so it's, it's not there, so we can't do that yet. Now, the next big step is you got to put plumber's putty or silicone all the way around this, this edge of the sink right here. So plumber's putty or... 100% silicone should go around that whole edge. So I'm gonna, I'm, not, I'm gonna pause the video for a second while I roll up some plumbers putty and put it all around this little edge right there. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, so what I pretty much did is, um. Roll some plumber's putty around the whole edge of this, this sink. Put a pretty generous amount around there. All the way around. Kind of rolled it out in uh, 12 inch sections. And kind of put it in there. About the thickness of your, let's say your pinky finger or so. Um, and once you put it on the countertop, you know, it's going to probably kind of go th squeeze through. That's okay. You can always take the access and put it back in the bucket. So that's what we got right there. So now I'm going to kind of set myself up so I can show you how to put this in. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to put the camera about uh, maybe right about let's see if I can do this. Yeah, maybe right there. So you can see, you might not be able to see the whole thing, but uh, maybe if I do this, you can see more. Nope, it's not gonna change anything. I could change it by doing this, I guess. There we go. That's gonna give you a good view of the uh, countertop. I'd be probably in this area right there working. So first thing first, turn the countertop. Facing out. The other thing is make sure you put the sink in the correct way. So if you know the where the faucet holes are, these these are the faucet holes and the, the sprayer and the 
faucet hose. Those that's going to get your backsplash. So if you put it on this side, you put it on the wrong side. That goes to get your backsplash. So kind of hold that up. I'm going to stick this through the middle, just like that. Kind of center it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these on just to just to hold it in place. without a helper so it's a little get the first two ones in is, is always a challenge but once you get them once you get the first two in you can get the other ones in corners first. Once you get the four in the corners, then you can start working with the other ones. So the four main ones. So just take your time. Make sure these are adjusted properly too. Let that sit back a little bit so I guess it's going to rest on. Get that snugged up. Get one down here. Get that lined up too. Get a little bit more. There you go. So, you got the four main ones in there. Like I said, when you start tightening this up, you, you see how it goes. I gotta slide this over just to get the center now. Right there. And that's centered. Put this one up in here. And these ones are kind of tricky because they, they catch on a small little lip. So you just gotta kind of work it in there. Now you got those ones in there, so that, that's going to give you your main support. Check your safety again, make sure it's centered. Looks like it's centered out here. Everything looks good over here. That looks good, and everything looks good. I'm going to move this up a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to start tightening this up now, see how it looks. So that's right there. If you take, you take off this all this excess putty here, just scrape all that off. Now you don't need it. Once it comes that far through, you can take all that excess putty off. Because at that at that point you don't need it because it, it made its seal up top. So all this can come all this can come out and go back in the bucket. Tighten this one down too. It's nice and slim. You need to take off this excess putty too if you want. Because it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Now, while I'm here, I might as well put the middle one in. Same process. Drop that little head. This little head. If you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. You move it this way so you can see more of the. There we go. Right there. Drop that into the little slot up here. Just tighten it up. You get the 
top done. Come down here to the bottom. They're already snug, you just gotta tighten them up now. Take this out of here too, or that excess putty can come out of there. Put the one in the middle, same, same process. Just remember the orientation, how they're supposed to look. Once you do one of them, the first one is probably going to be the hardest. Once you've got that first one, pretty much, you, you're not over tightening these. You want to just snug it so the it's keeping the sink in place. You, you don't want to, if you tighten them down too much, you could strip them out. You could you could pull, pull them off the, the, the uh, retainer. So you don't want to over tighten. You just want to snug them up nice and, nice and snug. So the sink doesn't move. There's no gaps in there. We got this excess putty off of here. All that excess putty can come out. Uh, not much here. Maybe, maybe a little putty there. But you can always use it for the next one. Over here is none at all. Here you got a little bit of here. Just take that out of there. Same process. Okay, those are all snugged up. This one here. It's snugged up. So here's the same thing. You open this one up all the way. So this one. There we go. And then I have a little lip. Just I always do the two at the end and one in the middle. We try to give it the most most pulling connection. Some people might put them here and here. And there's no, and you could put them in the middle too. You don't have to put them at the very end. I put them at the end just to give it a little straight, straight down pull. If you have a problem with the sink not staying in the middle, you could always move it down, put one in the middle there. Um, that's down. This one should have been on this side, but you know, it was cool to the trick. You would keep it down. Okay. Now get one last part over here. Same exact thing. You know, drop them in the slot. Okay, last one and the one in the middle, same process. You remember you have you have that slot. Drop it in that slot. Makes it a lot easier if you use that slot. So there. Now you have your sink installed. Take a quick look at it. As you can see, it's all the way around. Nice and nice and snug. Now, just to show you the other side, how it looks. See how the putty started, um, the putty started coming through there. You see how the putty is coming through. See down here as well, the putty's coming through. Now, 
And once I get the sink upright, I'll take all that putty off and put it back in my container. So. Um, next step, so since we're doing this video, we might as well put the faucet in next. And the faucet is pretty straightforward. Um, if you haven't put a faucet in before, you can, you can do this. I'll show you guys right quick. Basic uh, faucet with a sprayer, a Delta faucet. should put putty on this one. Put, put a little putty in that little chamber there and I'll show you I'll show you why. Because if there's any water on the on the counter, it won't it won't go through. So this is how it's supposed to go. This this is the ring. This goes inside that ring. And around that ring just throw some putty like this. If it's too much putty, it'll come out the other side, don't worry about it, but put some putty on there. Now, you got your little plastic nut. You guys can see that little plastic nut right here. Stick this part in the back and hold it. You can see where the putty's coming through. Just kind of tighten this up. And you're gonna snug it up nice and tight. Now this is plastic on plastic, so you don't wanna over tighten anything. You can use your fingers and get a couple more turns under that. That's gonna you don't wanna over tighten it either, but here we go. Tight enough that, you know, no water's going to pass through it and this doesn't move around. So that's out of the way. Your next step, because you're working with a sprayer, unravel your sprayer. Now this is very important for you guys that, that do maintenance and plumbers and stuff like that. You, sh you should know how the sprayer is going to sit in the base. So. You're gonna take this sprayer, you're gonna feed it through here. Just feed it through. Just like that. Feed it through. That's how it's gonna come through the bottom of the sink. Just like that. So that way you don't mess that up. It doesn't go through any other hole but that hole. Leave it like that. Now this is the part. Now, we're not using flared fitting, so. Typically these were used for flared fittings. We're not doing any flaring today. One day we might show you how to do some flaring, but today we're not flaring any brass or copper. So keep these over here for some other use. What we are using is regular supply lines. They look like these. Regular supply lines. Now you can buy these from any Home Depot hardware store type setup. These are 18 inch. Um, 3 8 to half inch. So this size should be the 3 8. Oh, well, this size should be the 3 8. Good morning, man. So we get, if I'm correct, this should be half inch, this should be three eighths. Could be wrong. It's been a while since I looked at these things. I know, I believe this is the half inch that I, I, I'm about to look that up. I could be wrong. 
half inch, that's three eighths. Great, this sounds great. Hey, I don't know everything. Now this is the part. Now you could choose to put Teflon on here, or you, or you, no, don't put Teflon on. Don't do it. Do not put Teflon on this because this is a compression fitting. I see people do that all the time. The reason why I say not to do it because these are compression fittings, and compression fittings don't need Teflon on these. You don't need to put Teflon on these. You could choose to do it, but you don't need to. So I make that clear. I see a lot of people put Teflon on these things, which they shouldn't do. Now, back in the day, we used to put plumber's putty around this. A lot of times, I find that it's not necessary to do that anymore no because water doesn't pass through this this thing, this plastic piece. If it's if it's snugged up the right way, water wouldn't pass through here. So I, I stopped doing it just to see if any water did come through. And so far, I haven't seen any water pass through this little plastic, this little plastic piece. If this is snug tight to the sink, I have yet to see water get beneath this and through the sink the other side. The other faucets, you had to put plumbers putty around this or silicone to keep water from passing through. I do remember those faucets. But so far, these newer type faucets that I've seen, you don't have that problem. Make sure the logo is in the front, hot on the left, cold on the right. And we're gonna stick this underneath and see what we got here. Just gonna put that through just like that. And we're gonna make sure it's kind of centered. Now these, you don't have to tighten these with a wrench. If you put enough pressure with your thumb, you can get a pretty tight, pretty tight connection. You gotta put a little pressure on it though. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's not that nice and snug. Now, I'm holding the faucet in the back, but a lot of downward pressure. That's, that's pretty snug. Like if you turn that with your thumb, you get a pretty good, pretty good turn on there. Now that the faucet's not moving, that's snugged up nice and snug. Now make sure you put this piece on. If you don't connect that piece. You turn the faucet and all the water is going to be spilling out of the back of that. So you have to make sure you put that on. And all that is, is a matter of turning this and give it a quarter turn snugness. Because keep in mind this is a compression fitting, so you don't have to do a lot of a lot of over tightening. Just that alone is enough to keep that on there. And you don't you don't want to tighten it too much where you know, you're gonna break it or do something like that. You just want to snug it. Now while we have the sink like this, this is the best time to put your supply lines on. Now when I see these are compression fittings, they have rubber gaskets on these, so you don't need Teflon tape. I see a lot of guys put Teflon tape around the threads, like these threads are gonna stop that leak from coming through. The rubber gasket is what stops the leak from coming through. So just kind of make sure you don't cross thread it. Make sure you turn it. Now, just me turning it like that, water will not come out of there. But you always want to give it another quarter turn just to make sure it's not loose. Like right now, if I turn the water on, this is snug enough that the water will not leak. But you just want to give it that little added, that little, that little snugness to make sure it doesn't kind of vibrate off or, you know, you're going to give it a good snug. 
We ain't make that much. And that's enough. I mean, you don't want to over tighten these bad boys. I'm going to use it a little bit more. It's a little too loose. There you go. You don't want it. No, that's, that's tight. That's snug. So now, that's pretty much it for the sink. All I got to do now is put the tailpiece on. The tailpiece is that little piece that comes out of here. So I got to measure that up. Put a tailpiece right, right there. I'm not going to... No, maybe I could do that, but I do. I still got to measure up what I need to do. So I need to measure. I need to dry fit this sink in here. Make sure it's gonna drop where I need it to drop. And then once it does, I can cut my tail piece to the right length. Use this little. I don't even see it now. Where is it at? It's around here somewhere. I just seen it earlier. There's a little piece. Actually, it's behind here. This piece. This piece is what holds your that holds your tail piece in there. So make whenever you get this piece, don't throw that away. That comes in handy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this so so I can dry fit this bad boy. Make sure it lines up and everything. If everything lines up, then I'll be installing the sink. Now, as, as you can see, we kind of piggyback the um the regular valves. Put some quarter turns on there. Yeah, because some of these valves are older valves. The quarter turns work a lot better. And, um, easier to work with. So that's kind of a thing you can do too. If you had time, you could change out the main valve to a quarter turn valve too. Which is not too hard to do. Alright, let's go dry fit this bad boy and see how it fits. Uh, I'll be right back with you guys in a few. Okay, I dry fit the sink. Everything lines up. My plumbing lines up with my trap. So I just got to cut my tailpiece and drop it into there. Uh, my supply lines are automatically going to fit because they're long enough. Now, this is the point where I took off the axis uh, putty here. I just take my finger and kind of take away the axis putty. Put it back in the container for future use. Same thing over here. Just take off all the axis putty. All you need to do is just scrape it off with, a, with your finger. That's good enough. Spray it in there. Take off the axis putty around there. I'm going to take off the access putty here. Some people use a razor, some people use a putty knife, you know. It's all optional. There's no right way or wrong way to take off the access putty as long as you remove it. If you see any extras like, see how you got a little bit there, you can always get your fingernail and just kind of pull that out of there. Now the back, there's more putty back there. Go back there and kind of, kind of pull it all out of there. See that? It's not that hard. Just pull it all out of there. Now, I haven't screwed the sink down yet. And the reason why I haven't did that because when I cut my tail piece, I want it to be a little bit longer. So it fits inside this piece here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. They pull this rag out of here. That rag is there to keep the gases from coming up out of the drain, if you guys don't know. Now I might have to put an extender on this, which which is not a, no, it's not, you don't even need an extender, you just need the nut. So that's basically what we have. I gotta get, I gotta get me a nut and I get my tail piece. Um, I'm not going to put all that in this video because this video is long enough. So basically I need another nut like this. The secondary nut. One nut goes under the sink, the other nut goes onto the, the brass. This, this is basically the same nut. So this nut here, just guys if you don't know, this nut will fit 
I need to show you real quick. This same net will fit. Let me pull this out of here. This is where your sewer gases are. Just pull this out for a second so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Mm. Here we go. So this same net right here will fit on top of this. See that? Okay, you guys can see that. It fits right on top of there. So I need a secondary nut just to do the same exact thing. Put this rag back in there because I'm not I'm not gonna do that right now. I gotta go down and grab another nut. So I'm using a plastic tail piece. You could use a brass one if you want. This one I'm using plastic. So I'll size this one up to the right size. And I will cut it the length and drop it in place. So um, that's about it. The rest is just, I think I did a video of that before too, how to connect the supply lines underneath. A hot the hot, cold the cold. Um, that's pretty straightforward. The compression fitting, so you don't need any uh, Teflon tape. Um, make sure you, you don't forget this piece. This piece goes under your basket strainer on top of this. Let me, let me take this out of the package so you can see what I'm talking about before I shut the video off. So you're gonna, let's do it right here. You're gonna open this up. So as you see, this is double-ended. So this is it's designed for you to cut. You can see that it's double-ended on both ends. So this part right here goes inside of here, like that. And then the nut goes in back of it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I do, I do a separate video on that. But it, that's pretty much, you know, it's, I can't say self-explanatory, but it's pretty much not hard to figure out. This piece here kind of sits right in there, it's like that. And then the nut goes behind it and holds it in place. Um, you don't need any Teflon on this either, just so you know. You don't need any Teflon. This little plastic piece does all the work. So you don't, you, most plumbing pots, you don't need a lot of Teflon. Unless you're doing like um, threaded pipe, that's when you need Teflon. Um, there's nothing under the sink that I can see that you need Teflon for. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's anything under that sink that you need Teflon for. A lot of guys use Teflon on way too much stuff that they don't need Teflon for. But um, this video is kind of long enough, so I'll catch you guys on the next one. Nez Porter.